Hey, welcome everybody. In this video, we'll build a Next.js 15 app router blog using WordPress as the backend CMS. We'll leverage the official WordPress REST API to fetch and display dynamic content. Along the way, we'll explore key endpoints such as posts, categories, and users, as well as some useful query parameters to customize the data. In this video, we're going to build a very basic blog layout, starting with the header. Then we're going to move on to this hero section. Then we'll move on to the social media, where you can set up different links. We'll also display categories from our WordPress website and display the latest blog posts on the front page. This will also feature a fully working search bar. So if you search for FTP, press enter, you'll see that it will come up with all the results that contain FTP. If you click on blog, this will show you your latest blog post with pagination. So I can click next or previous, and it will also show you which page you're on here. We'll also build some of the other pages like the about here. And we also have a very basic contact page. And the last thing that we're going to do is the sitemap. If you go to sitemap.xml, you'll see that we have a fully working sitemap that takes the main pages and also lists all the blog posts in here. First of all, let's go to nextjs.org and install the React framework for the web. In order to do this, let's copy the command from here. So I'm going to copy it, choose a folder where you want to install your project, do left shift, right click on Windows, just to open the terminal. This is a shortcut to CD to this specific folder. And now we can install Next.js by doing right click, mpx, create dash next dash app at latest. Press enter. This is going to ask us for a project name. I'm going to call mine next js-wp headless. Press enter. TypeScript, yes. ESLint, yes. Tailwind CSS, yes. Source directory, yes. App router, yes. Turbo pack, yes. Import alias, no. And we should be good to go. Now that we have the project installed in this folder, we need to cd to the project folder, which is next.js.wp headless. So I'm going to copy the name. Let's clear this. Control and L, and then I'm going to do CD, and then right click to go to this specific folder, nextjs-wp-headless. Now that we're inside this folder, we can do npm run dev like so, and our project should be good to go. Currently, we are using Next.js 15.0.3 with Turbo Pack. Let's open this in the browser. So control and click. And here it is. In the browser, we have a blank Next.js project. Let's clear some of the stuff that we don't need, and then we can start building our project. If we go back to the folder here, let's click on our project. And I'm going to open this in Visual Studio Code super quickly. So left shift, right click, open in terminal, and I'm going to do code to save a second. And this open Visual Studio code for me like so. And now we can start building our project. I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit, just so you can see. And that's it, let's start. The first thing I'm gonna do is in source, let's go to page and let's remove everything inside the return statement here. So I'm gonna grab everything, go to the bottom, whoops. And here where we have the last div, let's remove everything. Because we can't have it empty, I'm gonna do a div and have home like so, and save. If we go back to the project, you should be able to see that the project is still working and we have home, that's fine. Now let's close this, let's go back to the Explorer, click on layout, and from here, let's start by changing the font. Currently, they are using local font from Next.js, but I'm gonna be using a Google font, and to make this super easy for us, I'm gonna remove the local font, like so. Let's remove them from the body in here as well, because we don't need them. And I'm going to insert one from, again, Next.js, but using Google Fonts instead. So the font that I'm going to be inserting is called Inter, import, in curly brackets, Inter. And then this is going to be from, in single quotes, next, slash, font, slash, Google. And now we should be able to grab the font. So in order to do that, we can do const, Inter, equals enter and then inside here normally you can add a lot of options the only thing that i'm going to do is in curly bracket i'm going to put subset and then i'm going to put a latin like so and close it here now that we have enter let's put this into a body so here where we have body with a class name we can do dollar sign curly bracket enter and then class name like so and now enter should be working if i save this and if i go to the project you probably see a slight change of the font here, probably very similar to the one that we had earlier, but you should see the change. 
if I go back to the project and if we close this for a second, let's go back to the explorer here and open globals.css and let's have a look at what we have here. So here we currently have the Tailwind CSS imports and we don't need to touch those. And we have a root with some variable names like the background and the foreground. And we also have a dark mode, which I'm not gonna be doing here. The only thing that I want to change from here is the font family I'm gonna remove. And also I want to change the background color and save it. So the background color is gonna be white and the foreground color is gonna be this dark color. As you can see, the background is now white and the font is now this dark color, which is exactly what I wanted. Let's go back and let's have a look at what we need to do next. Now it's a good time to start building all out. And in order to do this, I'm gonna go to the Explorer and I'm gonna open the public folder super quickly and reveal this in File Explorer. Basically in the public folder is where you can store some of your images. For example, they have some of the uh, logos in here. I'm gonna be deleting all of these because we don't need them and I'm gonna be pasting my own. So I'm gonna grab a couple of them and paste them in here. And essentially I have three social icons here, GitHub, X, and YouTube. These are all SVGs. If I open it, should be able to see that we have an SVG here. And if I go back, I have a background that we're gonna use for this website. And it looks like this. I believe that this was taken from Unsplash and I'm gonna give you the link. If not, just go to Unsplash and find an image that you like for your project. So in this, this has been optimized a little bit. That's why it's not as sharp and I've changed it to WebP as well. And what else do we have? And I have a hero image as well here that uh, we're gonna be using later on. And I think I have a hero placeholder here, which is a small image as well. And that's more or less it. So in this, let's close it and let's go back to our layout. So layout.tsx, let's close the Explorer and let's focus on the body here. Where we have our class names, I'm gonna put them in another line just because we're gonna have a few of them. And one thing that I want to do because some of our pages are gonna be not gonna have enough content and I don't want the pages to jump because of the scroll bar, I'm always gonna have a scroll bar. So I'm gonna do overflow, dash Y and then dash scroll. So we always have a scroll bar on the right side and now let's add our background, so background dash and inside bracket we're gonna do url and then inside here we're gonna do stash background dot webp make sure that you optimize your background and then let's make sure that this covers the entire page so background cover like so we're gonna have background no repeat because i don't want it to repeat and then i'm gonna have the background fixed so it stays at the same place and then i'm gonna do background of Top, so background is always positioned at the top the way I want it basically. Saying this, let's save them. And you should be able to see that we have our background and our pages here displayed. Now let's go back. And one thing that I want to do is wrap our children, which is essentially where all of our pages are rendered into a div. So let's do this. I'm gonna create a new div. And this div is gonna have the class name of maximum width. And then I'm gonna put a custom value of 780 pixels. The padding over row is gonna be four, but on medium screens, we're gonna set the padding to 10 pixels like so. And then I want this to have margin of left and right. So MX auto, so all layout is in the middle. And then I'm gonna do a background of background like so. This is essentially going to grab the value from Tailwind CSS that we have here. So essentially our background is gonna be white. Let's close this. And then I'm gonna put a minimum height to be screen. Otherwise the layout doesn't look that great, but that's more or less it. Let's close the div, grab the ending of the div and wrap the children here and then the children like so and save it. If I go back, now you should be able to see that we have our layout here in the middle and we have a little space everywhere. If it was to right click and inspect it, you'll be able to see that we have a bit of padding everywhere. So our content doesn't touch the sides here and we have some breathing space. That's pretty cool. And now we can start building some of our sections starting with the header and maybe the footer. And from here, let's create a new component. So inside the source folder, I'm gonna create a new one called component. And you can either put your components in different folders or you can just list them like I will to keep it simple. So I'm gonna create a new component called header. 
and now let's create this component super quickly it's going to be fairly simple essentially we need to start by importing the next.js link so import link from next link like so and then we can do export function and the function is going to be called header like so and then we return a div okay now inside this div i'm gonna make sure that let's give it a class name and i'm gonna make sure that we have the logo on the left side and we have the navigation on the right side to do this we can put flex and then justify between like so and then i'm gonna give it a little bit of margin bottom with a custom value of 66 pixels and then i'm gonna center all the content inside this div by doing content center like so and that's it for the logo let's do a div with the class name of font dash bold and text can be set to 2xl to make it slightly larger for the logo i'm gonna just create a link so link and then this is gonna be href going to the home page like so i've called the theme light so instead of a logo i'm just gonna write it here the next thing that i wanted to do is a very basic navigation so i'm gonna do nav and then inside this nav i'm gonna wrap everything into an ordered list and then this unordered list is gonna have the class name of flex so we can give each element a little bit of a gap of four like so and then we can wrap every single link into a list so for example we can do link and then this link is going to be href and then the home page is going to be just slash let's close this and then let's do home that's it that's our first link and now let's duplicate this three more times all shift and down one two three and then this is going to be block and then the link is going to be block this is going to be about so let's change it and then this is going to be contact save it and that's pretty much all header completed i'm going to save this let's close it and let's import it into our layer.jsx here let's import it around here so import let's do curly bracket header and then this is going to be from add component header like so now that we have it in here let's grab it and let's insert it just above the children here let's make a little bit of space and do header and this is a self-closing tag like so save it and now if we go back to the website you should be able to see that we have light and we have the links hopefully they should be all centered i believe they are let's do a right click and inspect it and they do not look centered so essentially these will need to be pushed down a little bit let's have a look super quickly so header instead of content center we can put items center instead and that should fix all issue and that's all header done now let's create the footer super quickly i'm going to go back we can potentially copy the whole thing from here close this go back to the components and let's create a new one called footer dot dsx and then let's paste the header here i'm going to remove everything inside here in fact remove all of this as well and instead of header let's put footer and let's keep the link as well the footer is going to be super simple here where we have the div we're going to convert this to footer like so um, maybe i should have done the same for the header instead of a div but that's easily updatable and then we can do class name equals text dash center and then margin margin top of eight like so inside here i'm going to create a paragraph and then this paragraph is going to have a copy sign. So add and copy. And then 2024, light, and then add. I'm going to put a middle dot. So mid, so mid dot like so. And then this is going to say build with next JS version 15. And then I'm going to create another mid dot. So I'm going to copy this here. And put a link. So this is going to be link href and this is going to go to the site now which we're going to create later on in this tutorial and then let's close it for the sitemap we can just do map we can just put sitemap like so and save it now that we have our footer created let's go here and let's import it so the way we have the header we can duplicate this or chip down and just change it footer and then this needs to change the footer as well 
that's it let's copy the footer and put the footer after the children here so we're gonna do footer like so and save if i go back you should be able to see that we have the header now and the footer and for the people that want to change the header you can just go to the header here and instead of the div you can just do header like so and header that's it save it and close all of these Perfect. Now let's create some of the pages like the contact, the about and the 404. These are going to be super quick to make and let's jump into Visual Studio Code. Close the layout.tsx. I think that we're pretty much done with this one. So the first thing we need to do is inside the app, we need to create a new folder called about. And then inside this about folder, we need to create a file called page.tsx. I'm going to keep the pages super simple. And then once we create one, hopefully we'll just copy and paste to speed up the process. So let's do export default. This is gonna be a function page. And then inside here, we're gonna return. And then let's return a div. Here we go. And this is gonna have a title. So h1 in this situation, we're gonna do a class name of text dash excel to make it a little bit bigger and padding of bottom four let's put about us save it and let's put a little bit of text so i'm going to create a paragraph here and i'm going to copy a little bit of text i'm going to save this and let's give this first of all a class name of margin bottom six and now i'm going to copy and paste two more lines of text exactly the same thing in fact if i do well wrap you'll see everything here save it and if i go back you should see basically a title and three paragraphs. I'm also gonna create a div here just to make it a little bit more interesting with the list. So I'm gonna do a div and then this is gonna have h2 and then I'm gonna say a class name of text large and a margin bottom of four. This is gonna say project specs. And then I'm gonna create a UL and then it said here, this URL is gonna have a class name of list disk and then list inside. Like so. Let's create three lists and we should be good to go. So first list is gonna say next.js v15. Copy this twice. And then I'm gonna put tailwind CSS. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is WordPress. API. Save it just to make it a little bit more interesting. And that's all page done. As you can see, we can still go to the home page. We have it. We can go to the about and we are good here. Now, this is going to pretty much scaffold the rest of the pages because they're going to be fairly simple. I'm going to copy the entire thing here and close this and let's create our contact page. So I'm going to go here on the app, create a new one contact and then inside here let's do page.tsx and paste everything so essentially this is gonna change to contact us save it and i'm just gonna change the styling a little bit so essentially and i'm gonna copy and paste a different text let's do a wrap here we go we have a different text here. Then I'm gonna create three columns, div with a class name of flex, flex co, medium, flex row, justify center, and a margin bottom of six. And then inside here, we're gonna do a div with a class name of width full. On medium screens, we're gonna have this to width of 30%, so one third of the page and then margin bottom of four. Hopefully now that we've done this, this is gonna be a copy, a page job pretty much. So I'm gonna do an H2 and then class name, it's gonna be text, large, and then margin bottom of two. And this is gonna say address. From here, you can create an address. I'm gonna create a fake one, 123 London. London street like so, and then maybe UK, that's it, it doesn't really matter. And now I can copy this and paste it two more times. And then for the first one, I'm gonna say phone. Let's change this to the phone and we can do plus four, four, and then five, 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 five. Awesome, and then the last thing that I'm gonna do is email. 
and then this is going to be example and I'm going to put at example.com like so and save it. And if I go back, let's click on contact and this should be all page done. Now this should be fully responsive as well. It's fairly simple, but as you can see, it works. The next page that we can do right now is the 404 page. So I'm going to copy all of this and then I'm going to go and to the Explorer. And then for the 404 page, in order for this to work, we need to go to the app folder here and create a new file called not found dot tsx now this actually behaves like a normal page so i can copy and paste one of those two pages and paste in here and let's just clear the divs like so and essentially we just have export the food function page like so and then you can even put 404 and now if i uh, go to a page like let's say one that doesn't exist like one two three and if you press enter, you should be able to get 404. Let's dial this super quickly. So I'm going to go back. And then here where we have the div, let's remove this. And here where we have the top div, I'm going to put class name, flex, 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 call. And then this is going to be items, center, justify, center, and margin bottom of eight, like so. Inside here, I'm going to create an H1 for the 404 text. So this is going to have a class name of text-6xl, font-bold, and then the text I'm going to set to amber. Amber because this suits the background image quite a bit, and then it's speed 404. The next thing we're going to do is a paragraph that's going to have a class name, margin top for text to Excel, and then the text is going to be set to gray, and then 800 like so and then this is going to say oops page not found like so and the next thing that we're going to do is another paragraph with the class name of margin top to text gray of 600 and then inside here i'm going to do the page you are looking for doesn't doesn't exist save it and the last thing that I'm going to do is to create a link so I'm going to do link from H from next link like so if this didn't insert it you can do it manually and then you can do href and then slash to go to the home page and then the class name for this is going to be margin top of six padding x of four padding y of two two background is going to be amber 700. The text is going to be white. Let's put it as rounded. And then on hover, I'm going to set the background to be amber of maybe 800. So we have a little bit of a difference. And then I'm going to put a transition on this button as well. So maybe we need to put this on another line so you can see a little bit better. But I can just put transition like so and close it. This is all button and you can just say go back home. Save it, right click and format this if you have a formatter and save it like so. And we have all button in here. It doesn't have the rounded corners. One second. Round it. Let's save. And now it does. So this button pretty much just suits the background image. That's why I made it this color. And that's it. So now if we click here, we should be able to go to the home page, contact pages working, about pages working. And now we can focus on building the home page. So for the home page, let's close this. And the home page is basically located in the app and then page.tsx. This is where our home is. Let's open this page and I'm gonna separate this page into a few different sections. Essentially, we won't need this to start with. I'm going to create individual components inside here. And the first component is going to be our hero component. Before we do that, let's create it. So inside components, let's create a component called hero.tsx. Uh, maybe we can grab the header from here, copy the entire thing and paste it into hero.tsx and just change everything from here. Put a div like so and make sure that you change the header 
to hero like so let's remove this and now that we have our hero let's close the rest so we have our hero and our home page let's build a hero super quickly because it won't take long but essentially i do need the next image so i'm going to do import image from next image and then inside here this div is going to have a class name of margin bottom four put an h1 and this h1 is going to have a class name of font dash bold text is going to be slightly large so two excel and then margin bottom of two let's put hi i am ready and then i'm going to put a line about me here so this is going to have a class name of margin bottom of four. So I'm going to copy and paste some of the text from my blog and let's do view well wrap and essentially it says I'm a freelance web developer and con content creator. I make a wide variety of educational content with the primary focus on website development and design. From here let's remove the hero and let's insert an image. So I'm going to do image and then this image is going to have the source and this image is going to be called hero the png save it and i've already showed you this it's located in the public folder here if i reveal it super quickly you should be able to see hero.png i forgot to optimize this but uh, i can do this a little bit later on because this is quite a large image actually anyways anyways we can actually also optimize it with using the image tag i forgot about that essentially this is actually a good example here so i'm gonna do a width of 700 and the height is going to be 192 and then the quality you can change from the image which is great and you can set it to 70 for example or whatever works for yours and then i'm going to put a placeholder of blur so if we are on a slow internet i want to open a smaller image first blur it and then open the larger one and i've already saved this image as well i don't know if i showed you sorry about this like if i go here public and here is the placeholder so it's a tiny tiny image that is probably like 11 kilobytes even this is a little bit large to be fair i can maybe optimize that as well so we have placeholder blur and then we have the blur data url and this is going to be slash hero dash placeholder p p and g like so and then i'm also going to set the loading to be eager and I'm going to expand this in a second and I'm going to put alt to be hero hero image like so obviously put something a little bit more screen reader friendly and save it so indeed this is pretty much our hero here and I'm going to explain the loading right now so first of all let's import our hero into our home page here so I'm going to do here at the top import hero from components hero let's grab the hero here and put it like so save it and now let's go back okay now that we have our hero inside here essentially the loading is always set to lazy which means that when i load the page this is gonna lazy load after and this is great normally but when our picture is above the fold so when our picture is visible straight away on the screen and that can result in a bad lighthouse performance if you do it that's why everything that is visible in here i put a zigger and then if something is below the fold obviously i try to lazy load it that's pretty much it and the next thing that we're going to do is the social icons they're pretty easy to do as well so what i'm going to do is exactly the same thing as the hero here let's copy it let's close it let's go back here to the components let's create a new one and we can call it social icons maybe social dash icons dot tsx and let's paste the text in here so this is going to be social icons and save for the social icons we're going to need the image and let's remove everything else from here now to make it easier for people i'm going to create an array which we can loop from so you can add as many social networks as you want uh, as long as you have the icons so the images I only have two or three but essentially what we can do is const and then social icons and then inside here we can create an array and then and then each object is going to have a name and this name is going to be x for example it's going to have a url whoops it's going to have a url and this url for me is going to be http s slash slash x dot com slash ruddy underscore 
dev. Then we're going to have an image. And this image is going to come from our images folder. And I have it under slash x dot svg, put comma. And then I'm going to have an old text. And then this old text is going to be x follow ready on x. That's it. Save it. I can copy this, put a comma here, paste it, and then I can change this to GitHub, for example. And we can put github.com slash ready dev like so. And then this is going to be github.svg. And then I'm going to say follow ready on GitHub. So, and save. And I'm seeing that we have these underlined and it's because I've used exactly the same name as here. So maybe I can just put socials. Like so, and now we're good. Okay, let's jump here to the div class name of margin bottom four. And let's make sure that we have the title on the left of the screen and the icons on the right side of the screen by doing flex justify between. And now let's create our title, which is going to be H2, and it's going to say social media, like so. Let's give it a class name of text large. For the icons, I'm going to wrap them in a div, which div is going to have a class name of flex, and then gap of two, just so we can space them out a little bit and make them look nice. Now, in order to loop through these social icons, I'm going to grab this. Okay, from here, let's grab social. And let's put it inside here. So I'm going to do socials dot map item arrow function. We're going to create a link a, and this link is going to have a key. So let's close it first of all, like so. And now let's do a key, and this key is going to be the item dot name, and then we're going to have href, which is going to be item dot url. Then we're going to have the target, which is going to be set to underscore blank. So this link opens in the tab basically. And then we're going to do rel equals no opener and no referrer. And then we're going to do a class name or border p1 rounded medium. And then hover can be scale, maybe 110. And then transition can be set to duration of three, like so. And that should be fine. Uh, we could convert this into a link, by the way. If you have inserted a link from Next.js, you can just grab it and convert it to a link, like so. It's fine either way. And the last thing that I'm going to do is grab the image from here. So we're going to do image from Next.js, make sure that you have it inserted inside here. So image, and then I'm going to do source equals, and then this is going to be slash in single slanted quotes social icons. And this is essentially the folder here that we have of social icons. And then this is going to be dollar sign, and then the item dot image. And thinking about a uh, Let's have a look. We do have a slash here. So maybe we can remove the slash from here super quickly and have it inside here. That's going to be a little bit easier. And now we need to obviously close the image here. And also we need to do a few more things. So we're going to do the alt and this is going to be item dot alt like so. And then we're going to do width of 20, height of 20, and then the loading is going to be set to eager. I want them to load straight away instead of being lazy loaded as default. We do right click and format this a little bit. It's looking good. Save them and let's insert these social icons into our page here. So just like we have the hero, I'm going to do Alt Shift Down and this is going to be social, what did they call it? One sec, uh, social icons. So I'm going to put social icons from social icons. So now I can grab this and put it underneath the hero. And we have two components. Save this. Let's go back to our page. 
And as you can see, we have social media and we have the icons which are animated and you can click on them and they'll go to the social icon. For the next part of the tutorial, we're going to start working with WordPress, which means that you will need to have access to a WordPress website. Now, if you already have one, that's great. For those of you that do not or are thinking of upgrading, I'm going to be using Cloudways. So the product I'm going to be using today is the WordPress Managed Web Hosting it's going to be super easy to set up. It's going to take literally a couple of seconds. You can try it out if you wish to. There is a free day trial, no credit card needed. So this will be perfect for trying out. I'm going to put the link in the description below. One thing that I want to mention about Cloudways is that they do use some performance enhancements like Redis, CDN, which can be super helpful for your Next.js website because it's going to speed up the performance of the WordPress API without caching Without Redis, you might not be able to get the speed. Saying this, you have a VPS, and if you can set up all the caching yourself, you can set up a Redis database. That's absolutely fine. You should be good to go. Now, let's get started. I'm going to log into my account. Log in super quickly. Here, if you click on the little house, you will lead you to the dashboard. You can either have auto scaling WordPress application which means that no matter how many visits you get, it's going to keep on auto scaling. But of course that comes with a cost or you can use a normal server where you pay for a specific server size. So I'm going to do that. Let's click add server. Let's choose an application. So WordPress from here, we need to give it a name. I'm going to put Ruddy. Server name is going to be Ruddy's server. Project name is going to be Ruddy Whopper Headless. Like so. And now from here, we need to select our server. They're all great to be fair. I think the benefit with Volta is that they have high speed CPUs and they're using NVMEs. So if we go with the two gigabytes on DigitalOcean, that's $28. And if we go with the two gigabytes on Volta, that's $30. I'm going to try this one now because I tried DigitalOcean earlier. The difference is only $2, so that's fine with me. And also for the locations, they do have more location on Volta. Check them out. And I'm going to go with Europe, London. Let's launch our work website and our survey is going to be set up in 30 minutes so I'm going to probably going to pause the video and come back once this is ready okay now that my server is ready one thing that I'm really interested in here is that if I click on my server and if I go to manage services uh, not only the security that they provide this is good but also I'm, I'll be interesting to see how performant or API becomes let's go back to our service here and let's click on applications and here is my website. So if I click on Ruddy here, uh, you will see the thing that I'm interested in here is my application URL. So as default, they give you a URL where you can view your website. For most of you, I will assume that you're gonna add a custom domain if you don't have one already. They do have staging environment, which is great. They have monitoring, application security, uh, you can manage your domain name from here, cron drops, SSL, backups, and restore. Basically, pretty much everything that you need. Saying this, let's have a look at the application. And I can click on here. And my WordPress website should open. So this is great. My WordPress website is working. And we should be able to check out the REST API. If I go here to the URL, and if you put slash wp-json slash wp slash v2 slash post, for example, if you want to get all the posts and press enter, you should be able to get all the data. At the moment, I don't think that this website has many posts, so we're going to have to add a few. Let's go back and let's log in super quickly. So WP JSON, so WP admin, and I'm going to use the username from here and I'm going to use the password from here. Let's copy, let's paste it and I'm going to click remember me. All right, this is great. The first thing that I want to do is go to settings and then permalinks. I want to change the permalinks. So they are using the this one here. So post name, make sure that this is selected. So we have pretty euros and save this. Now that I have this saved, let's go to tools and then let's go to import. And then from here, let's click WordPress install now. This is going to allow me to import some posts that we can test. So let's click run importer and let's get some dummy data. Found some dummy data under the official WordPress website. So learn the wordpress.org lesson dash plan how to add demo content in WordPress. If you scroll down quite a bit, here at the bottom, there will be some dummy data that we can use. Here it is. And you can click on this and download the XML file. Now I've already have it downloaded and I'm going to go back to WordPress, click file, go to my downloads and here theme preview.xml. Let's open this and import the data. I'm going to select 
me and then download and import file attachment. If I go to post now, we should be able to see that we have a couple of posts and this is for the people that are just currently started. Now that we have some posts, let's have a look whether we can retrieve them. So I'm going to do WP JSON, WP V2 posts. And now as you can see, we're getting a lot more posts and now we can use them. And there should be some categories as well, hopefully. Uh, if I go back to the WordPress website and click on categories, we don't have any. Okay, so I'm going to have to add a couple of categories and I'll probably speed up the process here. So I'm going to put HTML, HTML. I'm going to put CSS, CSS, add. Okay, we have a couple of categories now. I'm going to go to the post and apply some of them. For example, the hello world. Let's apply this one to a category of, let's say HTML. And unfortunately I'm gonna have to do this for a couple of them super quickly. And then I'll again, speed up the process here. And I actually want to remove the uncategorized one. So I'm going to go to tags. I'm going to go to categories and let's see if we can remove this one as well. We can't remove it. So maybe we can change to something else. Let's just put order, order and update it. And that's fine. Now that we have some posts and categories, let's grab the URL and let's put it in our application. So I'm going to go back to my application here, Explorer, and then where we have source outside here, I'm going to create a new file called .env. Inside this file, I'm going to record the WordPress URL. So I'm going to do WordPress underscore URL. And then this is going to be equals your URL. Make sure that you don't have slash at the end like so. Just the full URL with HTTPS and that's it. So this is going to be the URL for me. Save it and we can close this. The first thing that we can do is to pull out all the categories. Now to do this, what we need to do is go back to your website and after the URL, you can put WP JSON WP V2 slash categories. And this should be able to pull out all of the categories for you. One, another thing that you can use is grab the whole URL. And normally I use a tool called Tinder client. So if I go here and if I say, let's create a new collection and say, I'm going to create a new collection, click here, new collection, and let's call it Next.js headless WP and press enter. And now I can create a new request. If he allows me, here we go, new request. And I can put the name of the request, maybe categories like so. So now I can put the full URL in here, like, like, whoops, like so, like so. And as long as this is a get request, I'm zoomed in quite a bit, but as long as this is get request and I send it, it should give me the same thing as before, uh, the categories. And here you'll be able to see the time. As you can see, the second time I send it, I assume it's cache now, and it went to 89 milliseconds, which is pretty decent. The more data you download, the more time it will take and so on. So from here, this is an easy way of seeing the data I'm working with it. Saying this, we definitely don't need this now. And we can start building the next section, which is putting out some of the categories. Let's create a new component. This is going to be inside component. Let's create a new file and we can call it categories. .tsx and save. Let's create something very basic to start with. I'm going to do import link from Next.js and let's do export async function. And then this function is going to be called categories. And then we'll do the rest later. But what we want to do is return and then we return a div and we'll just say categories for now. Okay, now that we have this, let's go back to our homepage and let's insert it. So all chip down and put categories. And then this is going to be from categories here, component categories. Now we can insert them into our page. Let's do that and save. If I go back to my website super quickly, and as you can see, we have categories. And if I show you the other pages, 
we don't have any of those elements because we're only building the homepage here with the hero step, with the social media and the categories. But technically speaking, these are reusable components and you can add them on any page that you wish. So let's start building the first query and let's have a look at how this is going to work. So let's remove the homepage and let's focus on the categories itself. So we're going to have to go to the WordPress website that we just created and grab the categories from the REST API. To do this, I'm going to create a new file outside the app folder here. I'm going to create a new folder called lib and then inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file called queries. And this is going to be a TypeScript file like so. So this is where I'm going to be putting all the queries. And to start with, I want to get the base URL from my EMV here. So I'm going to copy the URL from here and I'm going to do const base URL equals process dot EMV and then the name of the EMV variable, which is WordPress URL. This is going to come in handy when we do the calls to the API. And now we can do our first query. So let's do export async and then function. And then this function is going to have the name of get categories. And we need to set a type for the categories, which we're going to move later to a different file. For example, let's do a type category. And this is essentially going to be a blueprint object that represents a category such as those in our WordPress website. And you'll see how this works in a second. So essentially I'm going to do ID, which is going to be a number. And then I'm going to do count, which is going to be a number. And one more thing here, if we go to the actual API here, you will see that the ID is a number, the count is a number, the description is string and so on. So this is what I'm doing now. I'm defining the types here. So count is number and then description. And I'm only defining the ones that I need, by the way. This is a string. Link is a string. Name, string, slug, string. And then we have taxonomy, which is a category. And parent is number. That should be good enough. And I'll move this in a second, but I just want to show you how this works. And essentially now I can use this inside the query here and I can say promise. And then I can put the category from here like so. And now we can do const response equals await. And we're going to use fetch to get the data. So I'm going to be using the base URL. So dollar sign base URL from the top here. Here it is. And then we're going to do slash WP JSON slash WP dash V2 and then categories like so. That's it. And then we're going to do const data equals await JSON like so. And then we can do return. And that's it. So now that we have our first function, we can definitely move this into another file. I'm going to crop it. And of course, this is going to be highlighted because it's missing. We can go here to the lib file, create a new one, and we can call this one types. .ts. And now here we can paste it. But since this is in another file, we need to export it. So I'm going to do export type of category. Save this. And now we need to import it inside here. Import category from and then add a lib types. Awesome. Now this shouldn't be highlighted anymore and it should be good to go. Okay, if we save this, technically speaking, we can now use this to grab the data and display on the page. What we need to do is go to a home page, which is under app and then page.tsx. And then from here, we can do the query straight on the page and pass the data to all categories here. And then we're going to import get categories. And this is going to be from lib queries. And now we can use this inside here. So we can convert this to the export default async function home. And then I can do const categories equals await get get categories like so, and then that's it. 
If we get the data back, then I want to be able to render it inside this categories equals categories like so. And we're getting highlighted here. And this is because we need to jump back into categories. Let's click on it and let's import the type from add lib and then types. Okay, now I should be able to use them. Oops, I can do inside here categories. And then we can use categories and put the type inside here, like so. And now we shouldn't be getting the squiggly bracket. That's all looking good. And now we can actually start building our page. Technically speaking, if I was to do json.stringify, and then if I was to grab the categories from here and save it, now we should be able to go back to a website and you should be able to see the full categories in here, which is great. So what we can do is style this a little bit and we should be good to go. If I remove this, let's first of all, give this a class name of margin bottom eight. And then the URL is gonna be, is gonna have the class name of text and this is going to be a custom one of 0 0.7 rem. It's going to be uppercase. And then it's going to have flex gap of two, flex wrap. And that's it here. We're going to wrap everything into lists and those lists will have links. But what we can do is grab the category data now and then put categories dot map. And then inside here, we can do category and we get the category types from here, do that. Okay, and now we can do list. Every list will need to have a unique key. So I'm gonna do category, and then each category has an ID, so I'm gonna use that instead. And then let's style it a little bit. So class name or flex, flex shrink zero. And then let's insert a link here, so link, Make sure that the link is inserted, imported here at the top. And then this link is gonna have a href and then the href is gonna be in single slanted quotes slash posts, question mark categories. And then this is gonna be equals dollar sign. And inside here we put category ID. ID, let's give it a class name of hover, underline, and then, oh, this needs to be together. And then border, padding to one everywhere, and then round it, MD. Uh, the last thing that I'm gonna do is put the output, the category name, so category.name, like so, and then that's it. If we tidy things up, right click to format document, that didn't do a good job. I'm going to do it manually and save. Okay, now we should be able to go back and you should be able to see all of your categories inside here. Technically speaking, we haven't created the posts page just yet, or sorry, in this case, it's not going to be posts, it's going to be block. Okay, technically speaking, we haven't created the block page yet. So if I click on it, we'll probably just get 404, which is absolutely fine. But our categories are coming up, which is great. Essentially, the rest of the tutorial will be very similar, but we're gonna do different API calls instead. So next, let's do the blog post inside here. And for this, I'm gonna create another component that we can reuse. So I'm gonna close, let's copy the categories actually, and close this. Uh, let's leave the queries open, and let's leave the homepage open as well. So under components, I'm gonna create a new one, and maybe we can call it latest posts latest dash posts dot tsx. Okay, let's paste the code from the previous one. And we have, okay, we will change a few things here. So first of all, let's remove all the divs. I'm gonna leave it empty here. And let's remove all of this, just in case we don't have a break. Let's change the categories to latest posts. And save. Uh, hopefully they won't break anything, but now I'm gonna do post, make sure that it works. Okay, let's insert the latest post into our homepage. 
So here where we have the components categories, we can duplicate this and we can do latest posts. And then instead of categories, we do latest posts and we can grab it and insert it inside here, latest posts like so. Again, we're gonna have to create a query, pass the data inside here and then render it. So we have latest post and now we'll do the query. Let's do that. Let's first of all do the query and then we can get the data. We can pass it down and render it. So inside queries.ts, let's make a little bit of space. And then we do need to add some more types. So maybe we can do this first of all. I'm gonna go to our types folder here where we have categories and I'm gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna copy these and let's create a new one here. So export type, and this is gonna be post. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing as before. I've already come up with a few, but I don't believe that they're all of them. I'm only adding the ones that I'm gonna be using pretty much. So I'm gonna have an ID of number and then title is gonna be rendered string like so close this then we're gonna have a slug string this is gonna be date string modified string content rendered string like so then we have type string status Exert Auto This is going to be number and then we have categories Number Number array like so Widget underscore media underscore media is gonna be number. Awesome, this is it. And one more thing that I wanted to show you is that originally I was thinking of doing one for Yoast as well, because I know that a lot of you will be using Yoast, but it would be bad if I use Yoast in this video and somebody is not using Yoast. So I'd rather do something that works for everybody. But saying this, I did do a type for Yoast. I don't believe that it's every single element, but I did try. And here it is. Basically you have, I've kind of extended the post essentially. You have the title, the robots, the credentials, the, yeah. We have all the Yoast of that you can get in here if you need it. But this is gonna work for everybody. So I'm gonna be using this instead. All right, save this type, close it, go to queries here and let's insert it. So I'm gonna do post. And then we have category. Now we can grab post and we can use it. So let me remove all this and let's do it here. Okay, let's start with the same thing as here. So we can do export, async function. And this one is gonna be called get all posts. And then inside here, we're gonna be passing a lot of parameters in a second. But before we do that, let's put promise. And then here we're gonna have two, we're gonna have posts, which is gonna be uh, the post type. So I'm gonna grab it from here, it's gonna look like this. And then we're also gonna have total pages, which is gonna be set to a number, like so. Now that we have this, now I'm gonna put this on another line and see whether we can fit all of the parameters. So essentially I wanna provide a couple of parameters in here. And this is gonna help us with the pagination. This is gonna help us with the search and the categories. So you'll see how this works. First of all, let's add a page number, which is gonna help us with the pagination. So let's say we're on the first page and we want to display 10 results. Then when we go on the second page, again, we wanna display the next 10 results, which makes the pagination work. And this is gonna be a number. And this is gonna be equals one as default uh, because one is default on WordPress. So, and then I'm gonna have per page. And this is where we set how many records do we wanna display per page. And I believe that the default is 10. 
So I'm going to set it to 10 and the maximum is 100. You can check that on the WordPress documentation. And then we're going to have a search term for the search. And the search term is going to be string. And this is going to be equals an empty value when we don't pass one. Uh, maybe let's let me have a look because I'm zoomed in so much. It's a little bit harder to see. But yeah, that's looking better now. And let's add a few more parameters here. And then we're going to have the categories. So when we pass a category number or numbers, we want to display the post. So this is going to be a number. And then the default here is zero. OK, this is looking good. Let's put this on the same line here. And this will be fine in a sec. So we already know what the euro is. So our euro is going to look something like that. Our website name, WP, JSON, WP, V2 post. Uh, just after this is where we can change the results based on the information we're providing here. For example, you might want to add per page. If I go back to my Tinder client here, and if I go to post and here behind the euro, if I do question mark and if I do, for example, per underscore page equals two, this should bring only two results. So it's kind of hard to see, but it should work. Uh, let's have a look at the size here. Maybe if I put three, the size should change. Yep, it changed and that's it. So this is how we're gonna stack up some of the parameters. And in order to do that, Let's go back and what we can do is we can create new params. So const parameters params equals new and then we can use euro search params like so and then we can start stacking them from here. So if they exist, we obviously add them and the first one is per underscore page. You can again view this on the official WordPress documentation and then we're going to do per page. We can grab the data from the function. So per page and the default is 10 in this case. And then we need to convert this to a string. So dot to string like so and we put a comma. The next one is going to be the page. So page and then we can grab the page number from here and then again to string like so comma and then we can put the search as well search and then search term from here like so and that's it so these will be added to the euro and this is the actual data that comes from the function i hope that makes sense so the first check is going to be if we get categories if categories is not equal to zero it's not equals equal to zero then what we can do is params not set because we don't want we can't really have the categories as the food we want to first of all check whether they've been passed from our website and then add them if they exist otherwise it won't work that's why i'm doing the if statement here so we can do set and then we put categories and then we pass the categories by doing categories from here to string like so and that's it Next, we can definitely lock the full URL if you wish to, to see what's going on. So later on, we'll check it out. But essentially, we can do the log and then we can do the base URL. So dollar sign base URL like so. And then we can put the rest inside here by doing WP dash JSON slash WP WP slash V2 and then post and then question mark. And then we put the parameters from here perhaps okay this should console log the full url as when we get it and now we need to do exactly the same thing as before we need to fetch the data so what i'm gonna do here we can do const response equals await fetch and then we fetch the base url and then we put slash wp dash json slash wp slash two slash post question mark and then dollar sign and then params pretty much what we just done to be fair and then the params need to be dot to string like so and then for the people that want to cache this you can also do comma and you can pass different parameters here to cache it but for example we can do next and then we can do revalidate and then you can put uh, whenever you want to revalidate it. If you do a lot of changes daily, maybe you can revalidate every hour or so. But uh, for example, we can put it in here. So let's do const revalidate time. 
and then this is going to be a number and we can set this number to 86400 and this is going to be one day in in seconds i uh you can also change it to one hour or whatever and now you can just use it here and maybe you reuse that throughout the edits if you want to cache this fetch saying this all response is done here let's grab it so we can do const post equals await response dot json like so and now we can do const total pages equals pass int like so and then uh, this is going to be a tricky one because you can get the headers from wordpress and it's going to tell you the total pages i can maybe show you in a second but essentially you can do pass int response dot headers dot get and then from here you can do x wp this is the header and then wp total pages and if we don't get this we can do question mark and then we can set it to one as the fourth and the last thing we do is return the post and the total pages that's it uh it is a little bit difficult to show you this how it works but essentially this is all we need for this query so now let's grab this and go to the page here where we have get categories we can do comma and then get all posts like so and then we can do const we have to wrap we have to grab the post like so like this post, and then we can do await get all posts like so and that's it now that we have the posts uh, we can copy them and um, we can pass them to our component here so post equals post before we pass them let's save this and let's see what we get in the console what i wanted to show you is that here we go uh, because i had that console log we're getting the full euro with wp json wp v2 post per page is one sorry per page is 10 so 10 records page is the 14 to 1 and search is empty and we didn't and if we look at the query here we didn't add the categories because we haven't said that yet this will be set from the euro and i'm going to show you how it works and the the other thing that i want to show you just so you understand it let's comment this out is the headers here if i was to console log this i think i can do that let's have a look here so we can do console.log and then that's WordPress, the WordPress headers. Yep, all good. Okay, that's all good. Save it. And now if I refresh the page, um, one. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing the total pages. That's why, that's why I'm getting one. But what I wanted to show you is this instead. So response headers only. Okay, so now, as you can see here, these are coming from WordPress. And if you have a look at this super quickly, you will see that we have X WP total pages, which at the moment is one. And then we have some other information that we can use. And this is actually fairly handy for all pagination. So that's what I wanted to show you here. Let's remove it and save. And we're done with the query here. Let's go back to our page here and let's pass the data. So I'm going to do post equals and then post. Now this is going to scream at us because this isn't accepting it yet. So I'm going to go to latest posts, open it here and let's build this. First of all, we need the types of posts like so. And then when we have the function here, we can pass the data that we need. And from here, this is going to probably make sense a little bit later on when we reuse it, some of it. But essentially in curly brackets, we need to grab the title. We're going to have posts. We're going to have current page equals one. We're going to have total pages equals one. We're going to have the search term and then the categories. So because we're going to be reusing this, we want to be able to pass all these details and then do something with them. And essentially when we put the curly bracket here, we're going to have to do post like so. We're going to probably have to create another type. And let's put this as latest post props. And let's put this as latest post props. 
And for now, I'm going to do them here and then we'll move them. So I'm going to do type and then latest post props here equals and then in curly brackets, we're going to do post. And then this is going to be, we're going to grab all the types from the post here, comma, and then we're going to have current page. Here it is. And this is going to be actually optional. If you don't pass it, it's all good. And then if we put total pages, this is also going to be optional and it's going to be a number. And as you can see, they're slightly going off now. And then again, we're going to do the title. This is also going to be optional string. And then we're going to do search term, which is also going to be optional in case we don't pass it. And then we're going to do categories which is also optional and this is a number. Nothing should light up here and that's all good. We can definitely move this to types. Maybe I can grab it. Go to lip types and then export it. So I'm going to do here, export type latest post. And now if we go back to my latest post, we can potentially insert it like so. Awesome. The first thing that we can do, save this, make sure that you test everything. Uh, everything is working so far, no errors in the console, all good. Before we do anything else, inside here, before the return, we can check whether we get any posts. So I'm gonna do if we don't get any posts. So post question mark dot length. If this is equals equals zero, then we can simply return and display a div. And this diff is going to say no post available. Dot. Hopefully, if we go back, we shouldn't see this because we do have posts. And that's fine. Save this, remove it, types, remove it. Queries we don't need anymore. Let's just focus on latest posts. Now, if we do get the latest post, of course, we want to start rendering some of our data here. And instead of saying latest post manually, what I figured and this might be overkill, but essentially if we do pass title, so where we have the page, where is it, where is it, where is it, page, if we do pass a title here, so let's say title and you put hello, whatever, well, it's going to be like this, sorry. Hello, if you do pass it, I want that to be displayed as an option. That's why I have it inside here, where is it, title, and that's why we have it inside the latest props here as an optional. And the other one's exactly the same, pretty much. If we get the title, we can do title, question mark, and then inside here, we can put h2. This is going to have a class name of text uh, Excel, and then margin bottom of four. And then we're going to just output the title. Let's grab it, like so. That's looking good. Then inside here, if we get the search term, so when we search for something, search them, then I'm going to do question mark and then I want to display a different title. So essentially it's going to display, again, we're going to display this, but instead I'm going to hard code and put search results. And you'll see how this works in a second. And lastly, I'm going to do one more here. And this is going to be the default. If we don't pass the title, I just want to say latest post. Save it, and that's it. So, save this. If you go back, we should see latest post, which is great. So, at the moment, we're not passing any title, we don't, we're not searching for anything, and we're getting this, which is exactly what I want. And we can wrap this in a div, like so. And then this div is going to have a class name of flex, and then justify between because we're going to be adding a search bar inside here. So I'm going to do for now div with the search bar like so. Save it. And we have our latest post and our search bar is going to be here. Uh, we'll add this in a minute. Now the fun part here, let's go, let's go and create another div and let's loop through data. So essentially we've already checked here whether we get the post which means that if we don't show no post available means that we can loop through the post and display them this is the fun part so let's do div with a class name of flex and then flex call and then margin bottom of four 
inside here we can do post dot uh, question mark to see whether we have them and then map and then inside here we can do post and then we can use the post types from above that we've inserted and then we can do an arrow function and inside here we can create a link so link make sure that you do have link inserted here and then uh, let's close it first of all each link will need to have a key and then this key is going to be post.id which comes from the api we're going to have href which is going to be in single slanted codes slash blog slash and then dollar sign post dot slug even class name is going to be border bottom padding y of four flex justify between gap of four on hover i want to have a background of slate 50 and then that's it i think Inside the link, we're gonna render the post title, but we need to be careful because when I uh, send this, let's say, when we get the title, because I'm zoomed in, it's a little bit hard. When we get the title, we have this rendered and sometimes the titles, oh, here we go. This is a good example. Sometimes the titles and the description have random characters that we want to render properly. For example, ampersand and so on. We need to convert them so they display property. And in order to do this, let's go back. Div dangerously set in HTML. Like so. And then we can do in double curly bracket underscore underscore HTML. And now we can put post dot title and then dot rendered like so. Save this and we don't need to do anything inside the div. This will be rendered inside here. The last thing that I'm going to do inside here for the articles is the date. So we can do, um, I wanted to convert it to simplify a little bit. So I'm going to do new date and we grab the post dot date. And then to simplify this one, I'm going to do two locale date string like that. And I'm going to use German. So de dash D and this is going to simplify it for me. Uh, it's more of a design thing and save. Of course, you can change it to suit your needs. And let's go back. And as you can see, we have latest posts in here that come from a WordPress website with the date and everything. Now, this is going to be reusable and it's going to pretty much, and as soon as we finish it, it's going to pretty much be uh, accessible on the block here as well. Uh, when we create the blog page and I'll show you how that works. So now we don't have too much left to do in here. All I want to do is display kind of like a read more will lead you to the blog page. Or if you're on the blog page, I want to display the pagination. So for the pagination, we've already set up pretty much everything. I want to say if we don't have pagination, we're going to have a view more button. For the pagination, what we can do is we can use the total pages and the current page to our advantage. So I'm going to grab this and here is where we're going to have our pagination. So we're going to do if total pages is bigger than one question mark. And then inside here, we can create a div. This div, whoops, um, we need to div. We kind of need to close it now and create another div. So it doesn't break. Okay, that, that should do the job. If we get, if total pages is bigger than one, then inside here, I'm gonna create a div with the class, with the class name of flex, and then justify between. Inside here, we're gonna have another div. Let's close it. And then this is gonna be current page, if it's bigger than one. And, and we're gonna do link, href is going to be in single sign quotes blog question mark page equals dollar sign and then current page minus one and then we also put the search term in here just in case we have one because when you search we also want to have pagination it's a little bit tricky but essentially search term is what we grab and then if you don't get search term we don't put anything but if we do we want to add parameter and we put in single slant quotes we put ampersand to add another parameter and this is going to be search and it's going to be equals the search term let me grab it and uh, this is looking at search term close and do that okay we also need the categories so here i'm going to do dollar sign another 
uh, curly quotes and then categories. Let's do world wrap. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing and add another one. So dollar sign ampersand categories equals dollar sign. And then we put categories. Or we leave them empty like so. And then the last thing that we need to do here is add a class name of underline and put previous. So this is the previous link. And now we can also display the pages. So for example, we can do div with the class name text dash left. And this needs to be closed. And this is going to be page, current page of total pages like so that's cool and the last thing that we need to do is the next link which is going to be a bit of a pain again so let's do div div and then let's do link href and this is going to be again single slanted quotes blog question mark page equals dollar sign current page plus one this time we can also put the search term so and we can do the same thing pretty much we can do exactly the same thing after this let's grab the whole thing so from the search term let's remove this paste it and we have the full thing and instead of previous we can do next save this everything is looking good no nothing's broken yet which is good and the last thing is that if we don't go on the block page and we're not if we don't get the pagination then i just want to do class text center and i just want to display a link with href which is going to lead us to blog with the class name of hover underline text dash gray of 900 padding y is going to be five block and then rounded md and here we're just going to say view more post save it now you should be able to see the link view more post and this is going to lead you to the blog page here which we don't have yet essentially this is pretty much done we do need to create our search bar so let's do that next i think that's going to be a good one right click format this a little bit it will need tidying up but because i'm zoomed in it's kind of hard to see where our search bar is let's create a new component and i'm going to go to explorer components and then let's do search bar.tsx like so the search bar is going to be a client component so use client and when we search for something we need to be able to navigate to another page and in order to do this we can import the use router so import use no import use router like so from next navigation that's correct and then we can do export function and then we can call it search bar and then this function we need to things up we need to return and then we return a form for now save it. okay let's build our form super quickly and this is going to have a method of post like so and we'll do the functionality in a second let's create an input which is going to have the type of text placeholder of search class name is going to be border rounded-md, padding to the y-axis of 1 and padding x of 2. Text is going to be small and then I'm going to have a name of search which we can use to grab the data. Now, whoops, that's a self-closing tag like so. And then if you wish to, you can add a button, but I'm not going to do that. For the button, you can do something like this, button, and then this is going to have the type of submit. Or maybe you can put search. Uh, if you wish to style it, maybe you can just do class name of border rounded MD, padding Y of one, padding X of two, and text small like so. Um, what else do you need on this button? No, I think that's it. I'm not gonna add the button, but for some of you, you might like to do that. It's all good. When we basically go to this search bar and we press enter, we wanna be able to grab the data 
and submit it to a URL and basically go to the blog page, which is also already set up to work with or search. So what we're going to do is here where we have form, we're going to create on submit. And then this is going to have a function called handle search. Now we need to grab this and create the function. So here we're going to do function handle search. We need to grab the event. This is how we can grab the data basically. And since we're using TypeScript, we need to do react dot form event. And then this is going to be HTML form control. No html form element like so and then inside here we do the logic and i've broken this we need to close it and now we can and now we can prevent the form from kind of like refreshing the same page so we can do event dot event default here and then we can do const search input and then we can grab the event from here and then current target dot elements dot name item and then the name item is called search from the name here so we grab it and then as html uh, where is it input input element is what i want and then the last thing when we grab this element i want to push whatever is in the search bar to the blog page so this is where we're going to be using the router and in order to do that we can do const router equals use router like so from here and now we can grab the router and do router.push and then we push to the page that we want in this case it's going to be blog question mark search equals and then we grab the search input from here and then the value i think that's it okay let's import or search into the latest post so here we have import um, search bar from at components oops i think that needs to be slash slash components and then search bar that's it let's grab the search bar and replace it here so i mean was it in the div if it was in a div we can just do search bar and that should do the job let's have a look here is a beautiful search bar and if i was to search for something let's say rad and press enter you'll be able to see that it goes to block search and it passes the parameter of rad and now we can grab this parameter we've already done that on the query itself if we go to the query super quickly we will have the search term so if it's empty we don't really do anything but if it's not it's going to be added with the parameter of search and it's going to search inside the WP JSON uh, from WordPress and show us the result. I think if I go back, we're pretty much done with the blog page. So we might as well create this and then we can create the page where we can read the blog post. So let's do the blog super quickly. So I'm going to create, go to Explorer app and then let's create a new folder called blog. And then inside here, we create a page.tsx and i wonder which page to copy maybe the about yep let's do that copy the about page and paste in here and let's see what we can save so let's remove pretty much everything except this we can put this as we can change this so for now let's put it as block and save if i go here we have block that's beautiful but this will not be required so let me close this and let me close this. This will not be required because we've already got the title from here. So it's going to be quite flexible, hopefully. Let's remove this and let's go to the top. So let's import the latest post from components latest post. And now we can insert it inside here like so. All right, this will not be enough because we need to pass a lot of stuff into this. First of all, on this page, we're going to have to do the get all post query to get the date and pass it here just like before close this and let's do import get all posts from lib queries that's cool and we also need to be able to grab parameters from the url for example when we search or when we use the pagination like i showed you if i put rad it gives us a parameter of search. We want to be able to use this to grab the params, one for the slug and one for the search params. So let's create a type 
params equals promise and then inside here we're going to do slurk string close this and we're good here and then another one this is going to make the code a little bit cleaner here otherwise we'll have to add it all manually uh, type search params equals promise and then we do key string string or string or undefined like so close this and we should be good to go and do the fun stuff here so inside page and this comes from the official documentation by the way we can do props and then inside here we can do params and then params from here and then we're going to do search params and then this is going to be search params from here and that's it so now this should give us access to the url search parameters and inside here is where we can start uh, having them first of all we're gonna wait for the search parameter so const search param equals await and then props dot search params that's how we get it then we can get the current page so const current page and then this is going to be equal search perhaps one more time and then uh, dot question mark dot page or we pass int search params dot page as string and then 10 and then one like so what else do we need? We need the post per page. So the default is 10 const post per page. And this is going to be equals 10. That's cool. Um, why is this highlighted the weight? It's because we don't have async here. That's cool. So now it's not highlighted. I like it. And then we're going to do the search term. So const search term equals type of search params dot search equals 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 string or we put search params dot search whoops and we set it to uh, empty okay we have one more so const categories plus pass in and then inside here we do search params dot categories as string and then if you don't get the categories on the parameters then we can just default them to zero now that we have all those parameters we can use the query to pass them all and then get the results so if you remember all query i don't know where it is uh, we don't need the search bar we don't need the latest post we don't need the page but if you go to query super quickly You will see that we are returning the post and the total pages. So if I go back here, we can do const posts and then total pages. And now we can do a wait, get all posts, and then we can start adding all of the values here. Current page, post per page, search them, and then categories like so and this is all query done now to make things easier to pass all of this data into the latest post what i'm going to do is create const latest post props and this is just going to make it a little bit tidier because otherwise we'll have to write them in here uh, one by one and we can start with the posts so when we get this from the database here then we have the current page which we can pass we have the total pages that we can pass we have the search term that we can pass and we have the categories that we can pass and all of this data goes to the latest post inside here by doing the dot, dot, dot spread operator and then latest post props that's it uh, everything is looking good 
I go to blocks without the search here, so let's click on blocks. As you can see, we're getting exactly the same blocks. And for some reason, we're seeing view more posts, which isn't what we want. So I'm gonna have to check this out in a second. But if I was to search for something, let's say HTML, as you can see, all HTML works and there must be HTML in this blog post as well. And this is great. And a search should work from home as well. So if I put words worth 8,000 words, which is great. So this is working. The last thing that I'm gonna check out is why the pagination isn't showing super quickly. I reckon it's because we don't have enough posts. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my WordPress website. That's why we're not getting uh, WP admin. That's why we're not getting, well, but let me zoom back into this. So if I go and create some more posts, yeah, we don't have enough posts. Okay. So if I go back and refresh, Okay, if I go back and refresh, I did uh, control shift and R. And as you can see, we basically needed a few more blog posts and now we're getting page one of two. And then if I click next, we should be able to go to, yep, so I've put post instead of blog. Super quickly, I'm gonna go to the latest posts and have a look. Yeah, this needs to be blog. Okay, sorry about that. And then if I go back and if I click on next, as you can see, pagination works. Search should work, so FTP, and as you can see, it works. The next bit will be to actually create the page where we display the articles. Let's close all this, save this, save this, and that's it. So essentially, if you hover over and have a look at the bottom bit here, at the bottom left side, you will see that we, when we hover over an item, we're going to block and then we're using the slug in order to grab that specific block. Let's do the query first of all. So I'm gonna go back to our queries, lip queries here, and then I'm gonna create one more. This is gonna be called get post by slug. So export async function. The name of the function is gonna be get post by slug. The parameters are gonna be slug, be string and then this is going to be promise and then i'm going to do post from the types or we can set this to no and then inside here we can do const response await fetch and then the data that we need to fetch is going to be in single slanted quotes dollar sign we put the base euro and then slash wp json WP v2 slash post question mark and then slug. This is how you get it. And then you put the value in here by passing the slug basically. So slug and that's it. Point to wait. What did I do here? I need equals. Also, this exactly the same as before. We can um, revalidate it at some point. So cache it. So I'm going to copy this, paste it inside here, and that's looking good already. And now we need const post await response.json and then return post and we know to grab the post we need to put post zero and grab basically the first object this isn't correct probably getting a little bit tired now cons post yep equals await that's it that was a lot of typing to be fair for one session but that's it so now let's create our blog post page so we're gonna go to blog and create a new folder with brackets and slug. This is how we can get the slug from the URL and then we create a new page, not TSX. And then maybe, can we copy some of this? Let's copy this page and see what we can save from it and paste in here. And we're not gonna need most of it in fact. So let's remove this. Probably don't need this. Uh, the rest we might need. We don't need the latest posts. And that might be okay. But uh, instead of getting all posts, we're gonna do get 
replaced by Slack. And I just realized that we're going to need a few more. Okay, one problem that we're going to get when we search for, when we get the articles. So super quickly, I want to show you if we go for a post, um, we put the Slack here. So I'm going to go to Tinder. Uh, post and let's just change this to WP JSON like so and let's grab the slug super quickly so learn dash html learn dash html send this the problem that we're going to get is that for example some of the elements will have ids instead of the actual stuff that we need for example the author is equals one and i really wanted to display the name of the author so we're going to have to do a couple of more queries in order to do that. But uh, it's not too bad, they're actually pretty small. So what we can do, first of all, we're gonna have to create a new type under lib types super quickly, open that, go to the bottom. And then here we're gonna do export type author equals, and then I'm gonna put ID number, name, string and then the rest are going to be strings as well so one two and then we're going to do slug and then link that's it save it let's import this inside here as well so also and now we can use it i'm going to grab it let's go here maybe we can copy we could copy some of this let's copy this one here and let's change it get to auto by id and instead of slug we put the id and we set it as number and instead of post we put the author and instead of doing the base URL WP JSON WP2 we put this we put this as the ID that we want to pass and this is a little bit different so this is going to be users and then slash the ID of the user and that's how we can get it I'm not going to do the revalidation here so I'm going to remove this put everything on one line. Instead of compose, we're gonna do author. And then this is gonna be author like so, equals away response JSON, that's absolutely fine. And then we just return the author instead. Okay, not too bad. We might have to do the same for categories. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it here and let's do get categories by ID. IDs because we can pass multiple IDs actually. Many blog posts can be, for example, let's go here. Many blog posts can be in the CSS or HTML or JavaScript. So that's why IDs. And then this is going to be number like so because we can allow more. And then this is going to be category. Uh, let's have a look at the rest. So we have a wait, fetch, base URL, WP, V2, categories. question mark include equals and then we pass the IDs in here dot join because there are many we need to join them with comma like so and that's more or less it so instead of author here we're going to do categories and then instead of author we do category like so await response json that's fine and we return the categories it doesn't like it Category is missing the following properties. Category ID count description link. That's strange. Uh, one sec. That seems a bit odd. Category missing the following properties. Category ID count description link and more. Yep, that's correct because we haven't uh, because we need to change the category here. So let's remove the noun and that should fix our problem. And we might be done here. Hopefully, we might be done. Save this, let's go back to our page one more time. Make sure that we go to, uh, let's click learn HTML. And we have the page in here, which is absolutely fine. So if we put one, two, three, uh, we should be getting one, two, three, and that's fine. Now let's bring the data. Get post by slug, get author by ID, and then get categories by IDs, perfect. We have the params here. I think they're the same, the search params. That's cool. But I believe that we need to change this a little bit. So where we have page, we're going to get the params. And then we're going to do params promise 
slug and then the slug can be set to string that's looking good and now we can do const post equals await get post by slug like so and then we put await params when we get them then we get the when we get the params then we can get the data and then if we don't get post so if we don't get post then maybe we can just return something like return a div and then this div is gonna say post not found that's fine const also because we need to do another query for this and this is gonna be because await get also by id and we can pass the id when we get the post as i showed you inside here when we do a query we can get the id and so we pass it pretty much we grab the post dot author and that's gonna put the id and that's gonna go and get the actual author name and some of the details that you can also use and then we have const categories equals await and then get categories by ids and then we put the post dot categories like so i think we are more or less done the only thing that i want to do here as well is format the date uh, so it's a little bit more presentable when we render on the page and i'm going to do const format a date equals new date and then this is going to be post dot date and then we can do const date equal formatted date dot to local string i believe and then inside here we can do en us or whatever you wish and then we can put month to be uh, long we can put the day to be numeric and then we can put the year to be numeric as well like so and that should make the date a little bit more presentable i believe and now we can style our page and display the data so this is a nice part so we don't but then for the title we can do class name of font dash both text dash to excel margin bottom of four now we're gonna do exactly the same thing as before with the dangerous content so i'm gonna do dangerously set in a html double curly quotes like so underscore underscore html and then we can grab the post dot title dot rendered from wordpress and we close the h1 that's fine then we can do div give it a class name of flex justify between text small items center and a margin bottom of eight inside here we're going to do publish tom so let's put in a paragraph in bold i'm going to do the date which we can grab from here because it's pretty fight nice it will be nicely displayed and then we can do buy we can bring the author name in b again to make it bold so author from here and then we can put dot name like so then we can also list the category so div and the class name of flex gap of two text is going to be 0 0.7 rem and then this is going to be categories dot map category inside here we can do a link and make sure that you insert the link at the top here like always uh, are they even used? I don't think that they're used. We'll have a look in a sec. Maybe they're not needed. But link key equals category. Nope. It's going to be category dot ID with the class name of border P1 padding one everywhere rounded MD. And for the link, I'm going to do href and this is going to be in single sign quotes block question mark categories equals and then dollar sign curly brackets category id id like so and uh, did we close the link nope 
That's why it's so squiggly. But uh, that doesn't look good. That needs to be like that. So is this looking better? Nope. Here we go. And the last thing here that we need to do is the to bring the category name. Category dot name. And and something doesn't seem right. Let me inspect it super quickly. Yeah, I messed this up. Sorry about that. It's annoying. Save it and now it should all be good. And the last thing that we need to do is to render the article. So the article will be rendered outside this div. So this is kind of like a little header and then we're going to create one more. And this is going to have a div with a class name of article and I'm going to tell you why in a second. And then inside here, this div is going to be one of them dangerous ones. So let's do dangerously set in a HTML underscore underscore HTML and then post content dot rendered. Okay, we need to self close this article div and it looks good so far. So let's save it. Let's hope that we don't get any errors. No, it's looking good. Um, if I refresh, go to element. And as you can see, we're now getting the title here. We're getting when it was published on with a nice formatted date. And we're getting the author, which is me. And we're getting the tags. If there were more tags, they would be also displayed in here. And also you can click on it and see it goes to the block here. It uses the category of four and it shows uh, every category in JavaScript basically. So now if I go back to the front here and if I click on CSS, it should do the same. So this has the category of CSS and that's why it displays. I think, let's have a look at this. There is not much, yeah, there is a little bit of HTML, but there is not much going on. So the elements is probably the one we can look at. But um, one thing that I wanted to tell you now is basically when you get the data from WordPress, of course, it's not going to be stuck because it doesn't have the same CSS as your WordPress website. But what you can do is if you go to your Explorer here and if you go to your global.css, you can actually create new styles for this specific website the way you want. Let me show you. Now, you can either write normal CSS or you can even write Tailwind CSS. It's really up to you, but essentially you need to restyle your styles. And what I've done here is I created a class name of article. And I was thinking that if you wrap everything into an article, let's say you do dot article. Now inside here, you put all of your styles and I've made a few here and I've just applied a few styles and changed them a little bit and I'm going to show you. Uh, these are going to be available for you, but you better off doing it yourself and changing them. But essentially for the H1 tags, I've just applied a few styles, H2, H3, H4, H5, for the paragraphs, for the A links, for the hovers, for the block quote, for the figure, uh, strong M code pre oil oh, yeah. So all of these I've done like that. And if I save them, and if I go back to the website, you will see that this is already looking so much more presentable just by adding a couple of stars. Something you can do to make everything a little bit better. I don't believe that I've used all the stars. I'm sure that some of them will look out like this one here. Maybe you need to add border on this, whatever. Um, maybe that needs border. But that's really up to you, the tables, you can start the way you like. But as you can see, this is already looking pretty cool. The next thing that I wanted to show you is the sitemap. So the sitemap, we can go back. Let's remove everything. And then let's go up here to the app and where we have, and where we have app, we can create one more file. And this file is going to be called sitemap.ts. Okay, so for the sitemap, what you can do is go to the official documentation, search for sitemap, XML, scroll down and find this one. Uh, yeah, that would do. The TypeScript one, find it, copy it and paste it. You already have a sitemap now. Save it. And if I go to the foot of the website, and I didn't the link I did, but maybe it needs to be underlined. But if I click on it, you see that it goes to sitemap and it's broken. That's weird. Let me have a look super quickly. Did I save it? Sitemap.ts. Save it. 
Uh, Mira, yep, that's cool. Sitemap.ts. No errors. Let me try one more time. Oh, sorry. It's sitemap.xml. Okay. So in the footer, we need to update that super quickly. Sitemap view. Sitemap.xml. Perfect. Okay. Now, if we click on it, it should work. Uh, let's go here. Click on sitemap, and as you can see, it works. So this is your very basic sitemap. And let's make it so it works with WordPress. To start with, let's grab the base URL from our website. So I'm going to do const base URL equals process dot env and then dot. This is going to be WordPress underscore URL. And that's it. So now that we have this, we can change the URLs from here by doing them in single quotes, single slanted quotes, dollar sign and base URL. And now here, you can maybe do single slant quotes, uh, dollar, oops, dollar sign base URL, like so, copy this. And then you can do slash about. And then maybe you can do, let's put this like so. Save it, blog, and then maybe for the about, we can copy the about and do contact as well. Save it, let's go back. And as you can see, we have the URL and then we have contact about the normal one here and block. Perfect, this is a very basic sitemap. And if you wish to bring your blog post, what you can do is we can use our query that we've already done. So import and then get all posts from lib queries. And now we can use this. I'm going to grab it. We're going to convert this instead of returning. We're going to convert this to a const main URLs or else like so equals and then that's it. So we're not returning anything just yet because I want to do a quick loop. I'm going to do here we can do const post URLs equals oops and then metadata route like so, and then dot sitemap, like so. And now we can do let page number equals one. And then const per page equals 100. 100 is the maximum post that you can do. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to do a few loops in order to get uh, all of the data. Of course, now I only have a couple of items in my blog post, but if you have a bigger website, this is going to work as well. That's why I'm doing it like that. And now we can do a while loop. While this is true, we're going to do const posts equals await, get all posts and then page number and then per page like so, that's it. And then const batch post URLs equals post dot post dot map and then we map the post and then inside here we can do URL just like above and then we can grab the base URL uh, base URL and then slash blog and then slash oh this doesn't look good uh, slash blog and then slash uh, dollar sign post dot slug we put comma we put last modified and a new date post dot modify like so comma and then we put change frequency and we put this as weekly maybe it's pretty much up to you and then as const like so and then the priority set to 0 0.5 and this is saying that expressions are only allowed with async functions that's correct we need to put async here and that should be good and then here we can do post euros and we push them to the batch url post like so and if we do if posts not total pages is less than page number then we put a break and then we put page number plus plus and then the last thing that we need to do is after this function we need to return the 
main errors. So the main errors here, and we need to return the whatever code here was post errors. So here we do return dot 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 main euros and then dot 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 post euros um, return what's wrong with this um, this needs to be changed as well so this needs to be a promise Maybe that's why it's highlighting it. Uh, let's down. Let's go down to the bottom. And the last thing that we need to do here is the menu rows need to be metadata route dot sitemap, and I believe that's gonna fix it. Yep. Okay. Save it. Let's go back to the page. Refresh, and as you can see, we have the URLs here about contact blog learn HTML, we have all the other ones. And if you have a lot more, then they would be all here. And the last thing that I can show you is how we can revalidate this. So if you wish to cache this for every hour or every day, you can basically just do export const revalidate equals 300 and 60 like so, save it and now this should be saved, but it only works when you uh, build your project. So it probably won't work in development mode. Uh, and that's it. Uh, one thing, the last thing that I'm gonna do here is that everything is working, but just to test it, I'm gonna go to the .env and change the URL to mine. So I'm gonna do HTTPS ready.dev, save it, and then let's go back. and. This should also change. So now, as you can see, we have a lot more because I have a lot more posts. And also if I go back to the website here, you will see that the data should change as well. So these are real posts. You can click on any of them and you will display them. You can go to blog, you can uh, navigate through each one. And that's pretty much it. Okay, one thing that I almost forgot to do is to add some metadata to our blog post. And you can do this on the other pages as well to make them uh, SEO friendly. But I'm gonna give you one example here. So if you go to the source app and then Slurk page, then from here, we definitely don't need these. I think this was a copy and paste job from the other page. And if you go to the official documentation, so I'm gonna open this in a new tab here. And if you scroll down, you will see generate metadata function. This is what we need. Okay, so we're gonna be using TypeScript and essentially this is what we're gonna build. In this case, I'm thinking, okay, let's copy all of it and then we'll build our own one. Let's copy the whole thing and let's paste it inside here, make some space. And then the import statement needs to go here at the top somewhere. Then we have the type props here, that's fine. And then we have the generate metadata that can be put in one line super quickly or two, I guess, depending on how zoomed I am. Then let's do that as well. And for the rest, I'm thinking of just building it myself, but they're giving you a really nice example, which uh, I did use basically. But essentially what we need to do is const post await equals await, and then we get post by slug and then inside here we do we wait for the slug so wait params and then dot slug like so params like so and then slug and instead of id we definitely need to change this to slug and this needs to be a shrink that's correct okay so we will close, I guess. Now that we have the post, we can set up an open graph image. Let me zoom in. Let's do well wrap. So from here, we can set up an open graph image. So we can do const previous images. And then this is going to be await parent. And then here dot open graph. And then question mark dot um, images or new array and then we just need to return 
and then we can say, let's say for the title, we can put the post and then title question mark dot title dot rendered to see whether this uh, exists basically. That's why we put the question mark and then we put a comma and then we can do the open graph image. So open graph and then we can put a new one here. So images and then I already have one in my library that I showed you early in this tutorial and essentially this is under single quote size open graph dot jpeg and then we can uh, spread the previous images. You can read more about this in the official documentation but that's more or less it and you can do to be fair there is a lot more that you can do. Let me just have a look description so yeah you should be able to add the description as well like that so essentially we should be able to even do a description whoops and this is going to be post question mark um, description i don't know if it was description one second okay and this is going to be post dot uh, content and then render it oh i don't really want that the description is probably going to be the excerpt or something like that. So it would be, it's probably going to be post question mark dot uh, excerpt and then dot rendered like so and comma. Okay. In this case, if we save this and if you go back to our video here, sorry, if you go back to our website here and refresh here at the top, you should be able to see that we're getting how to make your database public with Qualify. And this means that all titles are now working. And I can click on this one here. And as you can see, it all works and so on. And the last thing that I want to show you is how we can animate the route. So let's go to the Explorer, go to tailwind.config.ts here. And from here, we can actually add a simple animation. So while we have extend and just after the colors, whoops, just after the colors here, we can do keyframes like so and then inside here we can create a new animation fade in like so and then this animation is going to start from zero percent whoops percent and then it's going to start with opacity of zero zero like so comma and then this is going to go to 100 percent so 100 percent and then opacity is going to be one, like so. And now that we have these keyframes, after here, after the keyframes, we can put animations. So animations, animation, sorry, like them. And then we put column and then fade in, which is the animation here. And then we can set the fade in animation to be 0.5 s is in out you can mess around with more animations but that one worked pretty well for me and save it now in order to make this work it's a little bit tricky but if you go back to your project here where you have your template sorry where you have your layout.js we need to use template so let me just quickly go to the official documentation and look for template Layouts and templates. If you go to template root layout, nope, nope. Just wanted to explain how it works. But basically, templates are similar to layout in that they wrap a child, unlike layouts that persist across routes and maintain state. Templates create a new instance for each of their children on navigation. So essentially, we can use this in order to animate the uh, layout. So we need to create a new template file.js or ts, whatever, and we need to put this inside. So the TypeScript version, I'm going to grab this, copy, go here under app, let's add a new file, template.tsx, and then inside here, we need to paste the code that we just copied. And essentially, all we need to do to make the animation work is put a, the animation in this div here. And this is going to wrap all the content inside. So essentially, the animation was good fade in. And we can do animate dash fade 
in like so save uh, if you save both of the files and if you go to your project then you should be able to refresh and as you can see uh, the layout refresh I'm going to do one more time as you can see that refresh if I go to block it will refresh nicely about contact and so on and if I go to a specific blog post it will also refresh as well uh, so that's pretty much it and that's gonna be everything from this video I hope that you liked it make sure that you like this video subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one